Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, we're going to take this image shot at night and we're going to process it in On One Photo Raw 2019. And when we're done, it's going to look like this. We're going to be working on this image. I took it from the highest building in Buffalo, New York, from the roof, and it was freezing. In the description below this video, I'll have all the exposure info, camera info, and the settings I use to capture this shot. I think you're going to be amazed how easy it is going to be to process this image in On One Photo Raw 2019. Now, this is the original RAW file. Nothing was done to it. I like to crop really early in my workflow. As a matter of fact, I usually like to crop right away. So I'm going to do that right away. I'm going to click on the crop tool. And you can see it's slightly crooked, just a little bit crooked. And I'm going to go here towards the left and just come off the image. And you can see that the cursor turns into that circle, circular arrow. Click with my, my left mouse button. And you can see that I just need to drag it down on this side just a little bit. Maybe a little more than a little bit. I don't know. Something right around there. That looks pretty good and I'm keeping you know just like this I don't think there's um, I'm not going to crop down I'm gonna leave the sky in there the little bit of sky that is showing and I'm going to click apply and there's my cropped image now nice and straight and this is actually a view right down Main Street in Buffalo now uh, we're just gonna jump right into it I'm in the develop module of the effects panel I'm gonna go to tone and color and I'm going to stay with the On One original profile. And really what I want to do and what I tend to do whenever I process any image, uh, including night images, is I look and see what seems to be the biggest flaw in the image. What does it need most? And when I look at this image, it's just the lights are very bright. So I'd like to kind of rein in all the different lights a little bit. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to jump right to highlights and I'm going to just pull this down and see what I'm getting. And I kind of like that. I'm getting a little more detail down here on Main Street a little bit. It looks a little better. And now, you know, nothing's really jumping out to, at me too much. It's um, relatively flat. It's not like there's not a lot of contrast. I'm going to move the blacks, or I'm sorry, the shadows slider around a touch. And I'm not, I don't think I'm going to even move that. I'm going to leave it right at zero. And same thing for midtones. This is what I'll often do is I'll just kind of test and see what it does. And maybe I'll leave that alone as well. Because what I think I'm going to do is instead I'll go to contrast and I'll move contrast to the right. And you can see as I do that, it's starting to bring the shadows down a little bit. It's kind of making the, the brighter parts just a little bit brighter even though I brought highlights down, but I think that looks uh, much better. There's before and there's after. So I move two sliders before, after, and of course I crop the image. So right there, I'm going to look at the white and black points. I'm going to hold the J key in when I adjust the whites and I'm going to move it to the right. And where that red is starting to come through, that mean is, means I'm clipping the, white, uh, the whites in the image. And when you clip whites or highlights, that means there's not going to be any detail at all. You're just obliterating the detail. Typically, I don't like to clip anything in the highlights area. So I'll bring that all the way till just all that red is just gone. Now, similarly for blacks, I'll hold the J key in and click on the blacks slider. And if I move this to left, you'll start to see blue come in the image. And you can see some blue. That means I'm clipping the shadows, clipping the blacks. And again, that means there's no detail at all. Now, conversely, for my cityscape, landscape images, I do like to clip the blacks a little bit. So I'll leave a little bit of blue in there. So that, in my image, gives me some absolute black all the way to almost absolute white. So I think there's a nice tonal range there, a lot of tonal depth. So I like that. So we move, let's see, uh, one, uh, two, three, four sliders. And there's before and there's after. We're coming along, coming along. And... Now, as far as the white balance is concerned, um, it's difficult when sometimes when you take a night shot because the street lights and all the various lights in the buildings, 
they're all different color temperatures and you can see some of the lights are very white some are very blue and some are very yellow and so we got all these different colors uh, so it's hard to kind of determine where to um, where to set anything so what you could do is you could just kind of like that's making it too warm for my liking and if I move it to the left um, I do like it just a touch cooler it is making the whiter lights a little bit blue so I just don't want to do too much of that and maybe I'll take this tint slider move it to the left a little bit to help take some of that blue out of the white light so I really didn't move it too much just a little bit like that so very minor minor adjustments there now here's kind of a pro tip if you're moving the sliders and you're just trying to move them in a very fine amount and you're having a hard time go to the edge of the panel and you can see how the cursor turns into this kind of vertical line with a horizontal arrow drag the panel out and you're actually making the the sliders longer so there's a longer throw and it's a little easier then to kind of micro adjust things so a little pro tip i think i'll just push it back so that looks pretty good so actually i think i'm done with the tone and color i would add that if you find that you're like getting a little bit of uh, coloration to the lights that you don't like like i'm making the the whiter lights blue you could come here and preserve it by moving this this slider to the right but you could see as you do that i'm starting to wipe out all the color and the, the other lights as well so you could try that as well and same thing for shadows if you have some odd colors in the shadows so i'm done with the tone and color tab I'm going to go to the details tab and I've mentioned this several times. I prefer to use or do sharpening and noise reduction with the sharpening and noise reduction filters that are in the effects module. So I actually, I'm just going to undo that and not use that at all. Make sure it found my lens and it did and we're good to go. Um, I'm not going to do anything with transform, even though they're buildings and some of them are tilted a little bit. I kind of like that look, so I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, so I'm going to jump right to effects. Now, deciding what to do here um i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to a color enhancer uh, filter right here and what i want to do here is is actually very simple i'm just going to go to saturation and i'm going to push saturation up quite a bit and then what i'm going to do is i think i'll go uh here and i'm going to go to the orange uh, slider and i'm just going to see that if i pull saturation of the orange down a little bit see how it's affecting those lights i just want to pull that down but i want i want the um rest of the colors a little more saturated so i don't want this orange to be overwhelming so that's what i'm doing there so i'm kind of boosting saturation everywhere but then bringing it down for the oranges a little bit and you know that's it simple as that now i'm going to go to add filter and i'm going to uh now uh, you know what before i do this actually let me zoom in there is some noise up in here so i am going to go to the noise reduction filter and i'm going to try subtle right off the bat and then uh strong usually is just too strong for me and that actually is a little bit too strong and if we go down here let's see if we go to shadows shadows is pretty strong but not quite as strong as strong was so we'll I think we'll go with shadows and that looks pretty good actually I'm not sure there's much color noise in here there's a little bit but not that much I don't think I need to boost that all all the way up to it, as it was so I'm going to pull that down to 25 and with the detail slider is if you find that your luminance and color noise reduction is softening the image too much you could go to this detail slider move it to the right and you'll bring some of that detail back now it may be impossible to see it in the video but i would encourage you to experiment with that on your own image uh, just move that detail slider to the right and i think you'll see a real uh, big difference actually so i'm gonna leave it like that zoom back out i think that's starting to really come together now so i'm going to go to add filter and i'm going to go to dynamic contrast in lieu of sharpening i prefer uh, sometimes dynamic contrast you can see what a difference that made right out of the box there's before that dynamic contrast filter was added 
and there's after. I mean, that is worth the price of admission right there, if you ask me. Before, after. I really like that. I thought that look. I think that looks really good. And you know what? I I don't want to really overdo this image. I think this looks really nice. I'm going to just add a vignette to it. I mentioned this is going to be very easy. It's just really easy to process images and on one, especially these night images. I'm going to do a strong vignette. I think that looks pretty good. It kind of brings the attention of everything to Main Street. I might try to just pull it down just a touch. Um, what I should do, actually, let me turn that back on. I'm going to hold the shift key in. And with the shift key in, I could drag it around. like Just like down a little bit. I think that looks pretty good right there. Might be a little bit too much encroaching on the middle. Maybe just a little. So I'm going to go to the size. And just push it away a little bit. Push it away from the middle a touch. There's and there's after there I really like that I think that looks good I think I'm done uh, so there is before and there is after there's before and there's it after now really all very easy to do with on one photo raw 2019 so you know uh, do some you know blue light when it's like like the Sun just fell below the horizon and you got kind of that uh when when i used to play baseball we called it dusk dark because it was difficult to see the baseball when the lights in the stadium went on and we called it dusk dark and us photographers they'll call it blue light the blue light hour or the blue hour um take images in that and then uh wait and take them um you know, maybe an hour later, two hours later when it starts getting really dark and then come into On One Photo Raw and process it very much like I did. And you'll find, I think, that uh, you'll be able to process your images very, very easily. And in case you're wondering, my studio is right here. See these four windows right there that are lit? That's not my studio, but the next four are my studio right there in that building right there. So, um, that's it. That's where my studio is. That's how you process an image in On One Photo Raw 2019. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.